Uh, hi, this is a quick training on iMacro. Uh, what is iMacro? Just in case you don't know, iMacro is an automation tool which is a record and playback, so you don't need to actually code. Uh, you just perform actions on the screen, and the corresponding automation steps are automatically coded into the system. Now it has three versions. iMacro one is there is a desktop based tool which is very powerful, advanced, used by uh, used for advanced uh, automation projects. Uh, the other tool is a browser based tool which is a browser add on, and uh, it is available for free or it was available for free. It is no longer free. Uh, it was uh, first launched on the Firefox platform, so the the add on for Firefox is way powerful than the one for Chrome. To give you a context of what is iMacro and what is the issue with the latest version, let's let's do a practical. I am in Firefox and I have uh, iMacro already installed. When I open this, and there are a few demo Firefox iMacros or macros or record automation scripts which completely installed. So let's uh, let's see. Let's let's use this, and I just play. So as you see, I am not performing any operation, but is automatically went to a website. It extracted a, uh, a text and it showed me a pop-up. So there are different uh, automation scripts already available as a demo. So you could judge the feature set and the power of iMacro in the default installation. So let's let's do another one. So I'll select maybe the stopwatch and I. I'll, I'll play this macro just to give you context i can edit and i can see this is the code is all available here so this is the code for i macro i uh, you know you never need to write this code maybe at times you need to customize or modify the code that's a different story altogether but you could as an end user if you have the code already recorded you could just play this so i'm just playing this and it's going to a different side it's entering the form it's doing data submission and another other coming back to the issue i was discussing uh, the latest version of iMacro for firefox has become paid so if you see here the these parts are disabled these parts give the location where you want to store your iMacros or basically automation scripts and uh, and you know i mean time and again you are shown this message wherein you are asked to buy iMacro so uh, i mean there is a way out so both the chrome as well as firefox plugins of iMacro have become commercial so you don't have file access you cannot put inputs outputs there are many issues the way out is to use an older version of iMacro the way to go about is first you need to install firefox portable and then you need to install an older version of iMacro so here are the steps you need to install firefox version 54 now it might happen that you want to use the regular or the latest version of firefox as well as this older version of firefox the best solution is to use a portable version of firefox for the older version and while you stick to the newer version for your other activities so what you do is you search for something like download firefox portable version 54 this is the version that you're looking for click on the very first link and which is a source forged link and this english is available which is <coughs> american english i guess click on this the download which start all right so the download is complete double click on the downloaded file click next click install once the installation is complete click finish you you may observe that in the same folder you have uh, firefox portable subfolder created which has location to the firefox portable exe this firefox version is version 54 and um, here was the exe that we saw simply double click on the firefox portable version and it launches you could create a desktop shortcut for easy access to this portable version of firefox so step one is done with step two is you install an older version of iMacro so search for download iMacro click on this link 
um, ensure that you are in the portable version of the app or portable Firefox. Scroll down, it shows an error message that you need a new version of Firefox. So, I mean, ignore this message, scroll down, uh, click on see all. So, on this page, once you scroll down, post the first version, there is this version 9.0.3. Click add to Firefox. Click install. iMicro installation is done. You see this message and click on this. This is the older version of iMicro that you have installed. And this will give you all the access that are required to run your macro. The next step is to enter settings. There are three settings that you need to configure. One is the name of the folder where you, you will save your automation scripts. Uh, second would be the input folder name wherein you supply inputs to your automation script and third would be the output folder name wherein the output from the automation scripts will be stored let's see this in action in iMacro click on the manage tab click on settings go to the parts folder as you may see the difference now these parts are enabled compared to the latest version of iMacro <coughs> uh, you can change this uh, there are three settings that I have discussed I will just change the location of the macros because I have it centrally allocated I click the apply button and you see as soon as I click the apply button uh, the location of the uh, macros have changed and correspondingly new macros which were stored in that particular location are reflected in the iMacro pane. So uh, next we'll quickly check the concept of how to play a script and how to play the same script multiple times which is called play loop. Let's see this in action. So I have this particular site uh, wherein I have posted a job and I want to invite uh, bookkeeping or tax professionals to my job. Uh, the more people who are invited the better it is for me now the challenge is in order to invite I'll have to click manually and invite them which is time consuming the alternative could be I have the script or the iMacro already recorded I can select the script I can hit the play button and it has done this on my behalf I'll go through this again select the relevant script which you want to run click the play button the script is executed now uh, again you know it's very time consuming for me to manually play this script multiple times for multiple invites so the way out is you can play a loop in a loop the same script is repeated by the max number of times that you specify in this field so in this case say i input a number seven once i click play this script will be repeated seven times so this is play loop so i'll just hit this and i see so the script has finished executing seven times and we see the result uh, the next step is to learn how to feed input data into your automation script so we'll look into how to create a csv comma separated file how to call the csv into your program and how to run an i macro which is calling an input csv program and see its effect on your output so let's quickly uh, look into the practical i have reverted back to the demo i macros provided by i ip switch so for this practical this is a form filling i macro what it does is it fetches these values uh, from an input csv and it, it will fill this and press the submit button. The input CSV is of this format. So we have uh, the first name, last name, address and the fields corresponding to, as you see, these fields have a one-to-one -one mapping in the CSV columns. There are three total rows. So we'll uh, run the macro three times. Ensure that the input CSV file is stored in the folder mentioned folder data sources 
so if you check these folders and one are one and the same so ensure otherwise it won't be able to drag the csv file let's play the loop first data done second data done third data in progress this shows you the current row that has been run and the final form is submitted and we are here there are certain situations where you are not able to store the input csv file in the default folder as mentioned in the settings in such situations uh, there is a workaround consider this same file address.csv which is now stored in this folder name test folder what you could do is you could copy the location of this folder go to your input script at the very top you see the command set data source you can append the location of the file to this file name click save and when you run the play button and when you run the play loop button it works exactly the same way uh, let's quickly check how the output files work um, the mechanism is similar to how the input files work so let's let's dive into it uh, this particular macro will visit three web pages and send save the web pages as an html so i'll just select this i uh, i'll play the script side by side i do have the folder mentioned in my settings which is the download folder so let's see uh, what changes do we see here so i click the play button all right so as you see the files that were downloaded are saved in the downloads folder as you mentioned so if we were to check the script you know there is a simple save as command and it's show, uh, storing here if you want to store at a default a different location we could just give the name so maybe x and test folder so instead of storing in the default location it will store in the folder that you specify here lastly there are two types of uh, files supported by imacro one is .iim file which is the default and other is .js files and the .js automation scripts are more powerful because it gives you access to javascript functions to perform manipulations on the input or the output data that you fetch uh, or feed into your script uh, more importantly these scripts can also call other .im files so that lends more feature and more robustness to your script uh, just one note is you can never uh, use the play loop button while using .js file you need to use the play button uh, so let's see this in action so I have this .js file like I said you can use only the play button you cannot use the play loop button for .js file if I were to check the contents of this JS file I could see that it's calling other uh, IM files which is using this code IM play so basically one script is calling another script which is only possible using .js type I macro files and there's one more thing is you know you can display informational messages using IM display so without uh, much ado let's play the script and you can see there is an information message displayed so it helps in debugging uh, it's calling different im files which are configured in the script and one by one you can see this is uh, this is working its own magic and it's executing few important messages so before we close this tutorial you may see this particular pop-up which will ask you to upgrade to Firefox version 56 time and again. Um, do not upgrade. As soon as you upgrade, iMacro will stop working. So make sure you do not upgrade and do not click the upgrade Firefox button. 
three important settings that you need to be aware of are the play speed the speed at which you run your script the parts which we have already discussed and the timeout limits so let's see what is replay speed and what is timeout limits in the settings tabs you can see the top option is replay speed which is fast medium or slow as the name suggests uh, the speed of execution of your script is governed by this setting fast is very fast medium is a bit a slower and slow is slow uh, what is recommended is you always have this at medium or slow because at times website will take time to load and your automation will fail if the script is too fast or it may give erroneous output so just to check how this works let's run a script in the fast mode and let's run the same script in slow mode so first let's go with the fast mode playing the script frame in the fast mode i click the play button the website loads uh, and the script is supposed to fill uh, fields different fields in different frames and you see it is done instantaneously let's check the same thing in slow mode so go to settings click slow apply again select the frame script click the play button as you see uh, the progress of the automation script is slow here it is going a bit slow see it has inputted the value f2 unlike the earlier script it was pretty fast now this is doing uh, slowly the execution is slow so this is uh, this is replace speed uh, another important setting that you need to be aware of there's a time off setting timeout is uh, the, the time till which you want the script to wait until a web object is available so it's it's set to 60 based upon your application which you are testing you could increase it or decrease it so if the the response time of the website is slow it's uh, slow to load set it to a higher value so that's it to iMacro beginners training in the next tutorial we'll see how to actually record a script